Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, part two of our radio strap for our first responders. We've got a body, now we need some strapping. Let's get onto that and make this a beautiful finished piece. All right, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there. Going to take you straight to the website. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over to our pattern table, get started. This is going to look like a ridiculously complicated pattern. Actually, it's not. In fact, a good example, almost half of the measurements on this is simply from the end of the strap to our first rivet hole, half inch. But everything's going to make perfect sense. We've got a digital pick. We'll look at that. But we're going to talk about a few things first. Okay, so here's what we're doing. We've got a main strap that's going to go over our shoulder. That's going to come from our buckle down to our radio strap. We've got a keeper for our buckle. We've got a sway strap. Right there, a mic clip billet. We'll talk about that. And then three cord stays. We're going to add cord stays on the main body so our cord, our mic cord stays right where it is. Now, the one thing we need to talk about, getting a good measurement. Now, if we're going to measure a firefighter, we need to get them in their full gear. Great thing about Leathercraft, we can put this radio strap wherever we want it on our hip. For me, I want this to sit about two inches below my belt, okay? So here's an easy way to measure. Let's take a spot right in the middle of our chest, and we're going to measure there down to a point about two inches below our belt on our left or right side. There's no left or right here, so we don't have to worry about that, okay? From that same point, let's measure over our shoulder and back down to our hip about two inches below our belt. That's our two main pieces. Now, that's our measurement. I want that to land about the second or third hole. So what we're going to do is simply add additional leather or additional length there to get that to land where it's supposed to be, all right? So let's jump over to a digital pick. So there's our main strap, 54 inches long, and then we've got our keeper, we've got our buckle side of the main strap, a sway strap. We're going to cut one there on our mic clip billet. Again, we'll talk about that. We're going to cut one, but over on our cord stays, we're going to cut three of those. The main body here, one and a half inches. Great thing here. What we're going to do is taper our straps. Super easy technique to turn a wider strap into a thinner strap so we can add hardware. All right, so we've got a feel for this. We're going to take this one step at a time, one strap at a time. So let's step over to our main table, start cutting some leather. We're going to cut our straps out of a side of leather. Now, this is a big piece of leather for us leather crafters. If we're working in a smaller shop, it's going to be hard to deal with this. But we're going this route because we need length. 54 inches. Now, we don't have to come from a side. Here's a great point. We can even come from a single shoulder because what we can do is cut out whatever length we can. Let's put an English point or a round end punch on that, overlay onto another strap, two rivets, and we can make a strap as long as we want. If we put a little thought into it, we can get creative and actually make the strap look like it was designed that way. So right here, we're going to go with a Shaheen leather. This is an eight to nine ounce. If you want to bump up your leather work, go with a quality leather. So let's cut out two straps at one and a half inch wide. So on our wooden strap cutter, best tool in our shop, I'm going to bring that down to one and a half inches. Let's tighten there and let's give that a little extra tight because I don't want this to fade as I strap. But with a quality leather, watch how easy this is to strap. And you can actually hear that, how smoothly it moves through the leather. Again, another point to a quality piece of leather. Our two straps are cut. How easy is that? Okay, so let's reset here. Let's concentrate on these two straps to start with. With most any side of leather, we can easily get both pattern pieces out of one strap. Ample length there, but I already cut into that side, so we need two straps here. Now, on our straight edge, 48 inch, it's a great straight edge, big help to us in our shop. But if we cut a lot of strapping, say belts, it's a good idea to get a longer straight edge. This one's actually 60 inches long. It's a drywaller's straight edge. We can find those at most any hardware store, and they're affordable. But this makes the whole thing a lot easier. Okay, so we need a 54 and a 20. And our 20, good enough. Let's set these aside. 
This is waste by no means. We will absolutely use every bit of that. In fact, right there, I've already got a belt blank ready to go. Okay, so now let's take our pattern and with our awl, let's mark for our holes. We've got our straps marked. Okay, so we're going to taper these two straps. Like I said, this allows us to take a wider strap, drop it down to a thinner strap so it will accommodate some hardware. So right here, we've got our four marks. This is going to be our bend back. Same on this strap. So on our wooden strap cutter, this is going to sound confusing, but once you see it done, it's going to make perfect sense. All right, so we're going to go from a one and a half inch down to a one inch. The difference there, half of an inch, half of that, is one quarter of an inch. So what we're going to do, let's reduce this from one and a half down to one and a quarter. Let's tighten that. Now on our strap, that means we're going to take a quarter of an inch off either side. Now we could go to a quarter inch and strap there. Just to me, it feels a little more stable if we, if we cut across our strap. So I'm going to bring that blade right to that mark, the fourth mark in. Oops, let's see if we can get the camera to see that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's cross over. I'm going to press that in, do the same thing on the other side. Let's press that together. Good, there we go. And bring that blade right down to that mark. Yeah, look at that. Nice and even. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And there we are, one and a half down to one inch. Well, first off, that's easy enough. Very clean, very consistent. Okay, let's take both of these over to our punch table. We've got a number of steps here, but everything's going to make perfect sense. So we've got a bunch of tools out here. Big point, we don't have to have any one of these tools. We can do every bit of this by hand, but the tool is going to make the job faster and the outcome more clean. So let's start with our taper. Right here, I've got a one inch English punch. That's just a strap punch. There's a one and a half. We've got these in multiple sizes. This is the one inch. So right here, I've come in about two thirds of the way in and I've made a mark on both sides. So right here, I'm going to take the very point of the tool. I'm going to drop that right in the top of that cut. Let's see if we can get that. There we go. So I'm going to drop that right in the top of that cut and I'm going to put that little blue line right on the edge of the leather. Yeah, there we go. How easy was that? I'm going to do the same thing over here. And there we are. Easy taper. Now, we can use a corner knife if we have one of those. We could use a round end punch, but in all honesty, I prefer the English punch because I want a more smooth taper. Here's why. If we've got a hard turn there, if we're, gonna, if we're using that on a belt, as we pull that through our pants, that's going to catch on every belt loop. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing over here. We've got a good even taper. And again, how easy is that? Okay, so let's do this. Let's come down to our one and a half inch English punch. Let's drop this in here on the end. Good. Very clean, very professional. All right, back on this end. Yeah, long strap, sometimes a little hard to deal with. Let's go with a one inch round end punch. We don't have to have this, but it's a nice touch. Now I'm going to do this backwards because my strap is over that way, but I'm going to do my best to lay that right in. There we go. Nice round end punch. Do the same thing right here. And we've got that piece. One last step here. Let's go with our oblong for our buckle. Now the rule of thumb here, one and a half inch strap, one and a half inch oblong. I've got four holes here. This will be our bend back for our buckle and we'll use four rivets. So let's do our best to center this both between these holes and left and right. And there we go. That looks good. Okay, back to our main table. Let's do a little edge work. We're going to use a stitch groover. Now the primary job for this, 
when we're hand sewing. This is actually going to cut a groove down the edge of our leather. We can sink our chisel into that, then our thread's going to sink down into that groove. I use this on every edge because it just makes my edges look very finished. So right here, we've got our guide arm and we've got a cutting head. I set mine at an eighth of an inch and I leave it there. To me, that's a good distance from our edge. It's not too close, not too far in. So let's butt that guide arm right next to our leather. I'm going to pull this up about 45 degrees and I'm going to give this just a little counterclockwise pressure. Yeah, how easy is that? And there we are. We've got a nice edge. Now, I almost wish I hadn't punched our end punch simply because it's a little tough to get a good clean groove around a small round end. And if we just run off the end and then punch that, which is what we'll do on our straps, to me, no groove looks better than a bad groove. All right, so let's take our number two edger. If you think of bevel glass, that's exactly what we're doing. We're going to take off this hard top edge. So right here, I'm going to come in, and I don't want to try to start right on the end. That's a little tough to do. So I'm going to come in just a little bit. I'm going to come up about 45 and out about 45, and there we go. We've got that. Now, let's flip this over. Let's just edge. No groove, but we're just going to edge the backside. Now, it never edges as easy as the top grain. So let's edge our flesh side as best we can. And there we are. Now, what we're doing is we're setting ourselves up to be able to roll and slick our edge. So I'm going to do the same thing to this strap. Our round ends can almost be impossible to edge on the flesh side. Let's just do the best we can there. That's all we need. Now, here's a big point. What I would like to do or prefer to do is line both these pieces with another piece of edge tan of four to five. That's going to make a very thick, very solid piece of leather. Now, that's a lot of sewing, both machine and hand. So we're not going to do that in this video. But much like our body, I would like this and that to be a little bit heavier but we're going with weights that are going to be common in our shop. But nonetheless, we have ample strength here. All right, let's clean up, punch our holes. The majority of our holes here are for rivets, so we want a smaller hole, but we're going to talk about that. But let's start right here. We're going to use a revolving or a rotary punch. Same thing. Now, in my opinion, this is the best on the market for cost and quality. Drop forged with replaceable tubes. That's not a cheap craft store revolving punch. But if we want to go all out, we absolutely can. Best out there, replaceable tubes, replaceable anvil, and we can even replace that spring. Okay, so our rivet holes. That is the majority of the holes that we have, except right down here, we've got our size holes. So let's do our rivet holes first. On this, I'm going to go up to about the third, maybe the fourth hole on the revolving punch from the smallest because I want a little bit smaller hole for my rivets. I want my rivet post a little snug in there. That's going to give us our best, most durable bite. So we've got four holes on each piece here. And down to our last rivet hole. Okay, now for our size holes. Let's go all the way up to our largest tube. We've got seven holes here. And there we are. Okay, these two straps, well, we are ready to add dye to those. So let's reset, knock out our smaller straps. We're going to streamline the process here just a little bit because we know what we're doing now. Absolutely. Okay. So right here, this is the balance from our straps. Got a good belt blank right there, about 55 inches. And right here, this is the piece from our longer strap. One and a half inches wide. We bust this down the middle. We've got three quarter inch width. Now, we're going to go with an eight to nine for our sway strap, but I'd like to jump down to a little bit lighter weight for these three pieces. So let's set our wooden strap cutter at three quarters of an inch. 
We've got it, and now let's strap this piece right down the middle. And how easy is that? Now, we could go three quarters inch on any one of these, but all told, this is just too heavy for our keeper and our clip right there. All right, so let's, in fact, we can absolutely use that. Not waste by any means, but let's set that aside. Let's cut our sway strap to length. Good, okay, all our holes here are rivet holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna edge, groove, and punch my holes. Good, we've got that. Now, like I said a while ago, we've grooved and we've edged right off the end. Now we'll punch around in because on a small strap like this, impossible to get a good groove line. And again, no groove looks better than a bad groove. So that's ready to go to our punch table. So let's reset here, jump over to a four to five ounce leather. And back to our single shoulder. In fact, that's where we cut our body. Now I mentioned for our body, I'd like a little heavier weight, better durability. But on our straps, four to five ounces is gonna be perfect. We don't have a lot of stress on these. So on our cord stay, five eighths of an inch, we're gonna cut three. On our keeper, five eighths of an inch, we're gonna cut one. And our little mic clip billet, three quarters of an inch, we'll cut one there. So I'm gonna strap this out, I'm gonna groove, and then over to our edger. Since we're going to a four to five ounce, I'm gonna use a number one. Good, our billets are marked for our holes. So we're gonna do rivets everywhere except on the outside of our cord stay. We're gonna go with a line 24 there. So for our rivet holes, again, about the third hole up. We've got those. Now for our line 24 snaps, let's go up to about the fourth, maybe even the fifth tube. We don't have to be exact there. What I don't want is this big hole where the post swims around in that. That's not gonna be a good bite. So let's drop in our holes for our line 24. Good, we've got those. Now I typically would like to bring this in about three quarters of an inch for the cap on our line 24 so we have a tab behind that. But on a radio strap, I want as few tabs as possible. All right, so let's do this. Let's take these four pieces. I'm gonna drop in a round in punch, bring those back over here, and we're gonna get set up, ready to die. We're gonna dye our straps the same way we dyed our body. We're just gonna dip dye these in a, in a to-go bin. Now on the dye, the most cost-effective cost way to go on this is the quartz. We've got this in the four ounce as well. But with the quartz, they can be a little expensive. So I really just keep my most common colors in quartz. I go with the four ounce for most everything else. Well, then we're gonna finish up with our leather balm. Now on our hooks, just inexpensive wire from a hardware store, but these are great. First off, we can drag our project through the die, but secondly, we can just hang that up anywhere in our shop and it's gonna dry much faster. Okay. So let's dip dye all of our pieces, and then I'll add the top coat. We have added our top coat, and we have buffed. Well, that looks good, very nice. Now let's slick our edges. We're gonna slick our heavier weights. I'm not necessarily gonna worry about a four to five. We're really not gonna be able to see that or feel that over here, we definitely will. Now a great way to go for slicking, gum tragacanth, or more commonly known as just gum trag. That's a great agent for slicking our edges and I keep that in my shop. But if we don't have any in our shop, we can absolutely go with a leather balm. So let's start right here. Let's take our rag, and again, I'm gonna go rather lightly, sparingly. Let's add some balm to our edge. Good, we've got a good coat. All right, let's take our rag, just wipe off the excess. And now with our slicker, let's slick. Now, it's easy to wanna press hard on this to get a better slick. That's not the point. If we do that, we're actually going to develop a lip 
on the top and the bottom. So let's rely more on heat and friction and let's just work this back and forth down our edge. Good, and a number of passes back and forth again lightly. So at this point, let's take our cotton rag and just like buffing our top grain, let's come back along that edge and buff. And there we are, just work that a little bit, fine tune it. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but now we've got a good gloss on the edge. It's rounded, it's smooth to the touch, that looks good. So I'm going to do the other side here and both sides on our sway strap and our longer strap. Well, that looks good, feels good, very nice. All right, our next step, let's knock this together. We're going to take our assembly one step at a time, make this whole thing very easy. But right here, I've got a sample of a sway strap. Because of the rich history of our first responders, I really wanted to go old school on that. So that's a light brown pro dye, medium brown antique, and the leather palm. The problem is, I use that combination in every video, so I promised we would go a different direction. So let's start with our sway strap. Now right here, we've got a square scissor snap. Square right there and scissor snap. That's a three quarter inch. Now we absolutely have the black rivets. If we were going with something tactical, I would go with black, but I wanna go with the antique nickel just to bring a little color out. So let's do this. Let's make sure we put our clip on first because we can't get that on with a rivet through there. So let's put a rivet through. Now, these are our double cap. This is the medium, the 5 16 and the antique nickel. In fact, we've got the rivets and the clips and all kinds of finishes. So let's do this. Let's bring that right to the edge of our marble. Good. That'll let that loop hang off. Let's take a cap, put that on, and let's set this. Good. Same thing on the other end. Good, letting that hang off the edge gives us a much better chance of getting a good flat set. Okay, our sway strap is ready. Let's reset, go to our keeper. One easy way to make really great keepers, we can make wooden blanks for these and I've got multiple widths for multiple size straps. But all we have to do here, let's make our keeper. Before we add dye or anything, let's set our rivet. Now we can wet form it and force it onto the blank or we can even force this on and let it dry wet with dye. But what's gonna happen is we get a good square, very clean keeper. Also, we can just make a number of keepers, put them on the form, let them dry. Whenever we need a keeper for a project, we pull it off and add dye. Now, I didn't wanna add a lot of steps into this video, so we're just gonna set a rivet on this. So this is the anvil from our four-piece setter set. Let's lay this face down. And I'm going to take one of our one quarter inch or the smallest of the double cap rivets, antique nickel. Let's swing that around. And on this side, let's do the same thing. And find a cap in there. And let's set that. And we've got a keeper. So right there, that's relatively easy. Okay, next up, let's set our line 24 snaps. We're going to use a line 24 snap. Now, in my opinion, that's way too much snap for a four to five ounce. We should jump down to a line 20 snap, but this is just a larger, more durable snap, so we're gonna make it work here. So let's start right here. We've got our anvil and our line 24 setter. Again, that comes in our four piece set. So let's start with our post and our stud, and I'm gonna put one of these on the end of each of these three straps. So let's do our best to keep this setter as straight up and down as we can. Get that post to curl down in. Good, there we go. Actually, that's almost perfect. Notice how that curled down in there, but I can spin that just a little bit. Let's just go enough. Good, there we are to keep that from spinning. And those look good. Okay, let's flip that around. Now we're gonna go to our cap and the socket. So let's lay our cap in the largest indent. I'm gonna flip this over, drop that in, and now our socket, same setter, and let's again do our best. This is a little trickier because we're in a bowl there, but again, let's do our best to see if we can get, can't get that post to go straight down and roll evenly. 
And let's just get that again to where it doesn't spin. But there we go. We got that poster roll down in there nicely. That looks good. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And just enough to where it doesn't turn. Well, all right, those look good. So let's step over to our buckle strap. On this strap, let's go over to a one inch square scissor snap. Let's bring that in. And on this, we're gonna set two rivets. So back to the medium or the 5 16 inch double cap. Make sure those rivets are set well and they look like it. Let's turn this around. So let's take our keeper, slide this on. We're going to set that right between those four holes. On our buckle, one and a half inch roller buckle in the black finish. So let's come through. Let's make sure our prong is up on that. Come through, slide that through our oblong. Okay, good. Now over here, we're going to set four and we're going to use the medium double caps. Our holes lined up nicely. We've got a good pattern. Now over to our cord stays or our mic cord stays. Now on this lower stay, we could possibly drop that, but it depends on which side has the input for our mic cord. So let's take a medium here. I'm going to come through and then through from our back. We're going to be able to bend that over just like that. Good. So let's set a rivet here. And same thing up here. Well, those look good thus far. Let's bring that around. Yep, they snap nicely. Okay, now let's step over to our main strap. And our last few steps, and we are done here. So back over to the square scissor snap, one inch, and the medium, or the 5 16 inch double cap. And every one of these holes is lining up nicely again. We've got a good pattern. Okay, let's flip this around. Now right here, we're going to do a cord stay. So again, medium from the back. We've got that set. Now the last point, and I mentioned this earlier, we needed to talk about this. Our clip swivels left to right or up to down. We can go either way. So we're going to add a billet right here that that can clip onto. And again, mediums from the back. Now we'll notice on that, we're giving that a little extra room there. We've got a two inch spread on our holes on our main body, but two and a quarter inch spread right there. Well, this is done. Let's step over to our main table put this together. We have got a good looking radio strap here. Let's see how this goes together. All right, so on my radio, I'm right-handed. I'm going to carry this on my right side. So on our right D, let's take our buckle side, clip this on. Good. And on the other side, our longer strap, and we always don't want our sway strap over here, and we want this over our sway strap. This is going to come across our back. We've got that. Okay, on this side, let's bring this around and buckle this. About the second, third hole. That's going to be a little tight to start with. It's going to loosen up nicely, but thus far, well, thus far, that looks good. Okay, let's add our mic. Now on our clip, this clip is sideways and it's got a lip on that. So it's going to be a little tough to get on there, but again, that's good. It's going to stay there. There we are. Okay. And there we are. We have got a good looking radio strap, solid, durable, well-made, and we know we've got a good pattern. What a great project and so many things to say. Well, first off, one big point. When we started this video, our pattern looked difficult and it looked confusing. Well, when we broke into this, nothing but a bunch of straight lines, rivets, and a couple of snaps. But secondly, can we decorate this? Oh, we absolutely can. How about our name, company number, nickname, 
anything we want there. So many ways we can go, and we'll get to that. But last big point, Mike, thanks for letting me use your radio for the video. Let's knock one out of the ballpark for our first responders. They deserve it. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.